It is nothing short of a miracle that I'm still married. My small business has taken over our home. Check this out. Not only did I take over the entire two car garage for this woodworking shop, we also converted a bedroom into an office slash studio for our live show. And three to four times a month, we convert our kitchen into a board butter making facility. Can't believe she's still with me. This is a shop tour, but I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to set your shop up as well as grow your small business along the way. Let's go. This is a two car garage, but this isn't where I started my woodworking journey. I actually started it in this little tiny shed that we have in our backyard. Now I didn't actually have the whole shed, I only had the front part of that shed and really not even the whole front. Two sides had stuff piled up. So I really didn't have anywhere to woodwork. So my wife felt sorry for me and said, hey, you could probably use the garage if you wanted to. She didn't know I was gonna take it over. As far as shop layout goes, it's really a personal preference, but I'm gonna give you some tips that I've learned that's helped me over the years. First and foremost, I think it's very important if you can to leave you some open space that you can work in. I've noticed that, yeah, the workbench is nice. I've got a four foot by eight foot workbench. It's extremely nice to be able to put your project up there and work on it, but there's a lot of times you need to bring it down to the floor and work on it. For instance, when I was building our outdoor sectional or the outdoor bench that we built, like a lot of those projects are bigger and it's just easier to work on them on this floor, especially after you get everything kind of squared up and you're kind of finishing things up. I like having open space. So if you can leave open space. Now, as far as uh, the, the setup of the shop, I've got the miter station against this wall and I like it because when I bring lumber in the shop, typically I'll stack it right in front of the workbench on this side of it. And then from there, I can take the lumber over to the miter saw, chop it up into smaller pieces and then take it back to the workbench. Again, with the open space, it really helps free things up. It just makes things work so much easier, in my opinion. And once I get everything down and down into bite-sized pieces that I can manage, cut them down on the miter station, I like to roll the tool card out here for the planer and jointer, and then I can use those right here in the open space. Again, it's nice to have that open space to work in. And then if I need to use the router table, I can move it here. Like it's a lot of benefits to having a little bit of open space if it's available. Now, if you come out of that green door right there, on the left side, you see the miter station slash tool wall. And also I've got some lumber shores up top. This is probably the most changed spot. In other words, how it used to look to how it looks now in the entire shop. And probably one of my favorite parts of the shop now. For the miter station, I built that. There's a video on that as well as plans available. I love this thing because it's only six foot long. It's only about two foot deep. So it takes up minimal space for a miter station. A lot of people, myself included, go overboard and build a very large miter station. I think it just wastes a lot of space. Now, if you're in a two car garage or smaller like me, space is a premium. And I've kind of gotten pretty good at optimizing the space that I have available here. And that's why I like this compact style miter station. As far as the tools and the setup on the miter station, I have the Capex here, Festo Capex. It's a very expensive miter saw. I don't think it's necessarily worth the price, but I wanted it because I'm a Festool fanboy. Underneath here, I've got the Festool CT36 dust extractor. It's connected to this. Does a pretty good job. A lot of people think the Festool Capex is an amazing dust collector or it collects you know, dust amazingly. It's not, it's just okay. But it does better than most miter saws that you're gonna find on the market. In keeping with that space saving organization type idea, one thing that I didn't do for a very long time and that I regret now because of how much it works well is going vertical with my storage. If you're able to attach things to the wall, doesn't matter if it's French cleat or if you go with something like this, this is called OmniWall. We partnered on a video together, full disclosure on that. But I love this system. This is called the Weekend Warrior XL package. There's a video on how to install that. It's very easy. But one thing about that, it's more of like a pegboard style, but it's, it's got different features on there. In other words, they have attachments and things and the pegs don't come out because they have a push pin that locks them in place. So you don't have to worry about when you pick a tool up, the peg falls off. So I like that system. And again, there's a lot of options there for storing things. Another thing that's really helped out is lumber organization or lumber storage. I bought two Bora wood racks. I have one on each side of the shop. That really helps keep that lumber up off the floor, except for sheet goods, which we'll talk about when we get over there. Before we move on around the shop, this is uh, one of the most useful things you can do in a small shop is put things on wheels. This is just a pack out with a dolly on the bottom, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the bandsaw is on wheels so I can move it around the shop when I need to because I actually don't use it here. I typically move it over in this area to use it. And then also the big router table is on wheels because I just keep it stored there because pushing it against the wall like that really helps conserve that space. 
But when I get ready to use it, I can move it out here in the middle of the floor, hook up dust collection. It's just really nice to have that stuff on wheels. So if you can make it mobile, make it mobile. The soft stop is also on a mobile base, so you can move that around. And the new lathe we bought, Miss 731, is also on a mobile base. Again, if it can move, it needs to move. For the bandsaw, I've got the 14 inch 10326 Rikon model. I like this bandsaw a lot. It's one of the kind of a mid range price, about 1500 ish dollars. You can get them on sale sometimes, but as far as functions and the way it works and, and how it works and how well it's made, it's a very good value in my opinion. Also on the router table, I built this router table, but it does have the Craig Precision Router Lift, I think is what's called, inside it, as well as the Bosch 1617 router. I think that's a very good combo. It's worked extremely well for me. Coming on around the shop, if you don't mind, <laughs> right over here in this corner, I have clamp storage over here. I just use Rockler clamp uh, racks for that. They're easy uh, to put in and they're very inexpensive and I didn't want to make any, so I just bought those. Works extremely well. You got parallel pipe and F clamp storage. Pack out on the wall. That's one of my favorite things that I bought last year was some pack outs that actually mount on the wall. And they just it just really helps keep organization and things up vertically on the wall. One thing I did sacrifice in this space is this whole entire corner for a gym setup, a little home gym. I'm not gonna go into that because a lot of you aren't interested, but I do have a channel called Lift the Barbell. I'm gonna put up a home gym tour in that on that channel if you wanna check it out. This is what I call comfort corner. <laughs> This is, uh, the reason I call it comfort corner is because of the mini splits up there. I bought that a uh, couple of three years ago, I think. It has been one of the best investments I've ever purchased for my shop comfort level because uh, not that it's great for the winter time. I've noticed the last couple of weeks we've had really cold weather. It got down to like eight degrees a couple of mornings and it just will not keep this space warm. Keeps it about 40 degrees when it's eight degrees outside. So it's better than nothing, but it just doesn't like the cold. So if you live in a cold environment, there may be better options for you. Main thing is the summertime. We get 105, 110 degree heat fairly regularly with very high humidity. This thing is a rock star. It keeps it about 72 to 75, depending on what I got it set on, but it works extremely well. I'm pleased with that. It's just a Mr. Cool. There's a video on that as well. If you wanna check that out. Also keep my tool cart here. Also, again, on wheels, it needs to move if it can. I built this video on the channel, plans available. Holds my planer, my jointer, but it also underneath it holds a, an air compressor and oscillating spindle sander. So it keeps a lot of the kind of a chunkier tools in one little central location. On the tool cart, I've got the, this is the new DeWalt DW735X. Well, new to me anyway, it's not new to be released. But this does have the Bird Shelix head in it. And I did a head to head video with this one versus a three knife version. It's very impressive, the, uh, <laughs> the difference. Like it's a big difference on the cut quality, the sound, a lot of difference there. <laughs> Is it worth the extra upgrade? Well, it's really depend on you and how much you plane boards and things like that. It's a very nice upgrade. The Wahuda eight inch jointer is on there as well. And this is a really nice jointer. There's a whole long story behind that jointer. You should really check it out after this video. Just search 731 Wahuda and you'll find it. Two, I've did a two year review on this. Now I think I've had it for over three years and it has maybe three and a half years. It's been a fantastic tool, especially for the price. It's very difficult. I haven't found one out there yet at this price point, an eight inch jointer, I think it's $550 that provides this much value. Like they're really good tools. Next is the vertical storage I talked about earlier. This is kind of a double edged sword because at first it was just a few sheets of plywood and then it was some MDF and then it was some two sixes and then it was some extra it's getting junky. And so that's one thing I have to kind of figure out as the year goes on is how to kind of clean this up and make it more accessible. Because if the three quarter inch sheet of plywood's in the very back and I need it, it kind of makes it a pain to get out of there. And then finally in this corner is the Laguna P Flux One. I think this is the second edition. Uh, we partnered on a video on that thing. It's, a, it's pretty good. I like it. Uh, do I love it? Mm. If I had it to do over again, I would probably really heavily weigh the Oneida Air Systems. No affiliation with them at all, or even the Harvey one that kind of lays flat. I think it's kind of more compact. I like the Oneida because you can mount it on the wall. Again, with the vertical thing, get it off all the way. As far as working, this works extremely well. The filter replacements on these are really, really expensive. This is my workbench. It's, it's a massive workbench and it takes up a giant amount of space, but I worked with a smaller one before I built this one. And I knew when I built this one, I wanted a four foot by eight foot one because 
I kept having problems with projects being too big. In other words, like furniture and benches and things like that would just get too big and it would like tip over the edge. So I wanted a bigger workbench. This is made out of walnut and ambrosia maple. And then I embedded the YouTube play button in the center of it, which is covered up with this rubber mat that I bought on Amazon. I don't know. I like this thing a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> It has served an amazing purpose in the shop as far as being useful. And then it also is beautiful. And I wanted kind of the two different things mixed there. And I went a little overboard on this, if we're being honest, but I really like it. Uh, you don't have to use like the hardwoods and things. You could use pine or whatever you wanted for drawer fronts. The walnut trim is just an added touch. You could literally leave the plywood edge, but this is not an overly complicated build. You just have to build several drawers, but this thing has been one of the best builds or most productive things that I've added to the shop just because of the usefulness of it. I've got clamping built in on the top, lots of storage, which I need in this shop. I love having a lot of extra storage. This thing has just been awesome. Also on the other side, I incorporated where I could put the CT48 dust extractor underneath it so that when I'm sanding or working, it's not in the way. It's literally tucked under there. And then there's two shelves over there, one for my crosscut sled to keep it out of the way and then another shelf just for, well, it collects junk. Literally the only reason I have this rubber mat is because uh, when I was like doing tool reviews and things, I like to have a darker background. It's not necessary, but it does make it nice just to not scuff things up or whatever. All right, coming on behind me here, you see the other lumber storage rack up top, but this is a Husky brand from Home Depot, Hutch with a side cabinet, and then I purchased an extra side cabinet so it would match, I would have two. I didn't like the off balance. But in this side, we keep our paint stains and wood glue, and then also some extra mineral oil for board butter and things. On the other side, I keep a lot of my cordless tools, especially cordless routers and things, and extra filament for the 3D printer. We'll talk about more in a minute. As far as the hutch itself goes, as well as the drawers, I've been very impressed with this. I went back and forth on whether I should buy this one or a couple other different brands, but just having nice smooth drawers that slide, Everything stays well organized, and that was one of the main reasons I bought this is because I needed organization before there was just shelves, open shelves back there, and it wasn't that nice looking, and everything just kind of piled up on each other and it got trashy, so I needed to get something better. So now I've got this, really clean things up. I also added this last year, the Bamboo X1 Carbon 3D printer, and I didn't buy this to make production stuff, although you can. What I bought it for was so that I could organize my shop. So I've been able to make pack out inserts, and all types of different organization things with this 3D printer being in the shop. Up top, I do have the Laguna Supermax, I think it's called, air filtration unit. That thing's awesome. Now, there's several brands that make these things. If you can get one in your shop, they make a huge difference on the fine particles that are in the air. A lot of people talk about my home gym, like how do you keep the dust off of it or whatever? Yeah, dust gets on it, but that thing really helps keep the fine dust down in the shop or in the airborne. So a lot of times I'll turn that on just to have air circulating, but it's while it's filtrating the air, even if I'm not woodworking. And on top of the hutch, it kind of looks like it's just, I'm collecting trophies or something, but it's not. It's actual tools that I use. I got the Festool Domino up there, Festool Track Saw, uh, TSO Guide Rails, uh, Festool Rotex, and a lot of extra tools that I use a lot, but I don't have anywhere else to keep them, but that makes a good spot to keep them up there. Coming on around the shop, this is the Shape Oco 5 Pro two foot by four foot version. Now I have a whole full review on this as well. This has been an awesome addition to the shop. I love this size. I think this is the perfect garage workshop size CNC, the three foot deep by five foot wide. It just takes up minimal space. Before the other one, the four XXL stuck out a little further and I had to kind of shimmy between the table saw and that. This just makes it so nice. And this thing has been awesome. I love this thing. I think it has added a bunch of revenue to the shop because of the stuff I've been able to make on it. It's just a good production machine for small garage wood shops. What it's sitting on is the old workbench, the very first workbench that I ever built. And I'm fixing to replace this with a better one, but I'm gonna make, uh, the video will be a build video on a um, basic workbench with some added features uh, that most anybody can build, especially for small shops. It's basically gonna be geared to small shops. Then, instead of using it as a workbench, which it will be, but I'm gonna use it as a table for this thing because this one, I need a little, I need some extra stuff on it and this doesn't have it, so I'm gonna make one. And before we go inside, the last thing I'll show you is the saw stop. This is a saw stop three horsepower PCS 
This has been one of my favorite tools that I've ever gotten in the shop. This thing is a really fine piece of equipment. It's a very expensive piece of equipment, but it has been so nice to have. I love the SawStop technology. I have a bunch of different videos on SawStop and their patents and kind of all the hoopla that goes along with that you can check out. But I think that as far as the machine goes itself, I love that it has a safety feature on it, but the machine itself has been top notch. Zero issues, plenty of power, cuts everything just like I need. One of the main questions I get on the channel all the time, multiple times a week seems like, is what is this flooring? This flooring is actually horse stall mats that you buy at your local farm store. I get mine at this place called Atwoods here, maybe you tractor supply. You look for farm supply store near you, they've probably got these. They're four foot by eight foot and they're three quarter inch thick. And then the next question people ask me is, well, how does it affect the tools that are rolling around? No effect at all. Like the tools roll perfectly fine. They're firm enough that they don't compress and cause any issues. One thing I've noticed since I put them in before I had the concrete, then I put these in, is my back, my legs, my feet don't hurt as much as if I'm just standing on these versus the concrete. So they've been a really nice addition. Now they are a little pricey at about 40 something dollars a piece. So the, how I did it was I literally bought, the first one I bought, the reason I bought them was to go on each side of my workout thing. So when I deadlift, it doesn't break the concrete or whatever. And then I bought these two. So I bought three to begin with, split one and a half, put these two down so I could have a place to work out out here. And then from there, I just bought one or two at a time as I could afford it. Uh, one year for Father's Day, uh, my kids bought me two of them. And so I just slowly added them over time until I got the whole garage done. Took uh, several months, but eventually I got it all covered. Look up. So this is the lights that we have here in the shop. Uh, there's a whole video on these. I don't even remember the name of them, but they're very good. They come in 10 packs and I put five of them on one circuit, five of them on the other. Whole video on that too. They daisy chain together. They can plug into a regular outlet or you can hardwire them whichever way you want. I've got one side on um, a switch and the other side's on the Amazon smart device. I won't say the word and I can just tell it to turn the lights on and off. I like that a lot. Turn the camera lights on. There's another little light right there, that little square one right there that I use on this side if I'm filming this way. This one here is an Amaran 200D, and then I have another one over there on the other side. Those two Amaran lights just with those soft boxes really help light me up whenever uh, you're making videos. Most people don't have to worry about that. But as you can see, my head gets pretty shiny the further back I go, but it'll diffuse more on the other side so it works out. But the lighting in here made a massive difference. Before I had only like half of it lit, and so half of it was kind of dim. That is one of the better upgrades you can make to your shop is to add extra lighting or good lighting. They're LED, they don't get hot, they don't like flicker or anything. They just make a really good light in the shop, good even light. Here's another reason it's a miracle I'm still married. About three times a month, our kitchen turns into full production mode on board butter. Miss 731 makes all the board butter here at 731. We're making between three to 500 cans a month, depending on the month and the sales. And how we make that is we're using food grade mineral oil, 100% natural beeswax. We're gonna combine those two into a melting pot. This is just a candle wax melter. And then once it's melted, Miss 731 uses a pancake dispenser of all things to dispense it into the tins. Now we're selling two ounce and four ounce tins, depending on what the customers want. They can choose between those two. We sell the two ounce in six and 12 packs. And what those are for, a lot of people are using those to give away and or sell with their cutting boards and charcuterie boards to help their customers keep those conditioned. This is turned into one of the major parts of 731 Woodworks business is being able to sell these tins. I'd love for you to check out some of this board butter for yourself if you're interested. I'll put a discount code here on the screen to give you 25% off any board butter order and check out what our customers are saying. A few, just a few of the reviews we've gotten on this stuff. It's really good board butter. We're proud of it. We stand behind it here at 731. Give it a try. Another way the small business has taken over our home is that we've converted this room into a studio slash office slash supply storage. So we just keep a lot of our shipping supplies as well as our products in here. And then also I have my desk in here. Miss 731 has her desk in here. And then we also do the live stream every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central here on YouTube in this studio is what we call our studio. Uh, converted this over a little bit and added some key lights to the ceiling just to help for lighting. And then we also have a camera that's dedicated to the live stream. And then of course my desk set up here. Uh, both of us are using Mac Studios for computers. Uh, they seem to be really good computers for what we're doing for video production as well as just everyday tasks. 
Uh, I made my desk, she bought her desk, and we got some extra storage in here as well. To help with the echo and the sound of this room, come on in. One thing we've added recently to help with the echo and just the sound of our live streams to help it sound a little better, or any videos that I make in here are these wall panels. I actually don't recommend them. They work well. They're just very cheaply made and they cost quite a bit. Basically all they are is MDF strips. They're painted blue and they have a foam backing on there. And so we just added these to the wall. It made a huge difference in the sound of the room, creating a more, I guess, studio effect where there's not as much echo. It just works extremely well. Pricey, I'll link to them in the description. I just think that they could be made better. For video at my desk and or the live stream, we're using the Sony a7C3 or C2, I think. I'll link to it as well with a 16 to 25 GM2. Very good lens, high-end-ish camera equipment. I didn't start out that way, but I found that this is, I like the Sonys a lot. I'm using a Sony a7 IV and to record on this. I think they just, they work well. They look really good, really crispy 4K. I like how they look and work, so that's what we're using. For sound, typically I'm using the DJI mics for the wireless mic here, but when we're doing our live stream, you see these mics like this. These are Rode Procaster mics, and we're using a Rode Caster Pro 2 for the sound mixing. I found that this works extremely well. It sounds really nice uh, on video, so that's what we're using here. For lighting, I do have a key light right there. Gives it the main lighting for the show and or videos I'm making in here, as well as an Elgato key light on the desk. And then I have a hair light for my bald head <laughs> up there in the ceiling. Just kind of gives, helps separate you from the background. On the floor, I'm using an ADG Mega Bar just to kind of give it that soft blue glow. This will change multiple colors, any color in the rainbow really that you want, but I prefer the blue color. So that's what we're using for background lighting and or video lighting. I told you I'd give you some small business tips along the way. Well, here they are. Uh, if you can buy in bulk, it's better. Uh, get a good shipping service. We use Shippo. It helps give us discounts on shipping products out of our location here. My wife has been a massive a blessing. Uh, she has went all in on this business. It wasn't the business she chose, it was the business that chose her. And so she's been awesome. She makes all the board butter here at 731 by hand, by herself, puts all the labels on, packages everything, ships everything out. She is a rock star. She does all that. She puts special notes and surprises in with these orders that you get. If you've ever ordered a physical order from us, you know what I'm talking about. Matter of fact, if you use the code PRIZE when you order from us, 731bullworks.com slash store, P-R-I-Z-E, I'll give you 25% off any order. You can check out that board butter for yourself and see the surprise that she puts in there. Pretty cool. She's been awesome. She does an amazing job. I can't thank her enough. I think when you have someone who uh, comes alongside you and y'all work together to build a business you have <laughs> like the world is your oyster you can do anything you set your minds to as long as both of you are in accord one thing we do is we do have weekly meetings or try to have weekly meetings about the business we'll take no phones or anything like that we literally sit down and discuss business i think that's huge too if you have a partner that you can do that with it really has made a massive difference in our business. As far as investing in tools and stuff goes, just what I always done was I made sure that I had the profits available to buy the tool. I never went in debt buying anything. Uh, we have been debt free this entire time, seven years in, and it's worked out well for us. I'm not saying you should never take on debt. It just depends on your situation. But as far as this business goes so far, we may later take on debt depending on the project and the, what we're looking for, but we really, like to use the profits from the business to reinvest into the business to help it grow. There's a lot of books out there about this stuff. I think the main thing is Dream Big by Bob Goff's my favorite uh, book. It's not a business book, but it is about chasing your dreams. Start with why, Simon Sinek. And of course, the Bible. There's a lot of wisdom in there that should not be overlooked. This shop has changed a lot and my small business has changed a lot over the last seven years. It's thanks to you. I appreciate you so much. Uh, one thing that I want you to realize is that None of this matters. I said this on the last shop tour. These tools are nice. It was, it, they're nice to have. It does make your life and job easier to do sometimes. But with that said, I was perfectly happy before I had all these tools, perfectly happy now. You've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take it with you, so none of this matters. Not a single bit of it. It matters at the end of your life when you stand before God Almighty. He's not gonna ask you how many tools you had or what type of saw you had or any of that stuff. All that's gonna matter is if you put your trust and hope in Jesus. If you wanna learn more about that, I'll put a link in the description below that explains it all in full detail called the story. 
If you want to see how much this has changed over the years, this shop, you got to check out my very first shop tour right there. Comment on that video and let me know what you think. And then also there's another video right there that I did my last shop tour about a year and a half ago. Go check them out. I'll get you the big old virtual fist bump.